So if our first function is f of x is equal to 2 to the x plus 1, and the x value that is in question is 3, then f of 3, I'm just using some function notation here, is equal to 2 to the 3 plus 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. 2 to the 4th is 16. That's a number you should be able to figure out without your calculator. Now, yes, you can use your calculator, but 2 to the 4th is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 16. Okay, what if our function is 2 to the negative x? And the x value is 2. Well, f of 2 is equal to 2 to the negative 2. Well, uh, I don't really know about negative exponents, but what I do know about negative exponents is I can make them positive by moving their position in a fraction. Well, it wasn't a fraction. I can make it 1. I can stick it over 1. So I can move it to the denominator so the exponent becomes positive. Now, I know what 2 squared is. That's 4. So 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. Okay. And then an e to the x example, f of x is e to the x, and the x value is 0. Uh, e to the 0 is 1. If none of your math teachers have ever told you that any number to the 0 power is 1, then I am sorry. But I am telling you now, you should know that. Any number to the 0 power is 1. Any number to the zero power is one, always. Now, zero to the zero is not one. Zero to the zero is something that we call it indeterminate form. But anyways, just a side note there. Okay, so here I just want to remind you of a couple of exponent rules. The negative exponents, the zero exponent. Okay. Any questions there? And review function notation. All right, let's review some more properties of exponents, though. Okay, let's look at some more properties of exponents. <clears throat> um, I think most of y'all know that if you're multiplying numbers that have the same base, what do you do with their exponents? You combine them by adding, right? Okay, now, key number one is they have to have the same base. So yes, I purposefully threw in that base of three in the middle of this problem. There's nothing you can do with that. All you can do is combine the two that have the base of two. So the three to the x, that's just gotta chill for a second. Um, we add the exponents for the, the bases of 2. Now, you don't have to write out that step. I'm just trying to be explicit so that when somebody's looking back at the notes, they can see it. And really, the order doesn't matter. I just prefer numerical order, so I'm going to put the 2, the base 2 in front of the base 3. But again, it really doesn't matter. Okay, x minus 1 plus 2x is 3x minus 1. And I like to, to put the multiplication symbol there in the middle so that I know that it's multiplication. I know I didn't have it in the original problem, but anyways, just some notational things. Okay, let's look at one with base e. e to the 2x minus 1 times e cubed. Well, they have the same base, so that means that I can add their exponents, 2x minus 1 plus 3, that is e to the 2x plus 2. Now, notice that I could factor out a 2 here. Sometimes that's going to help me out. In this case, that's really as far as we can take it, um, but you're going to see in the next example that we can go a little further with that idea um, because in the next example all I've done is replace the e's with 4's 
Okay. Same premise, same problem, but I've replaced the e's with 4's. So I know that this is equal to 4 to the 2x plus 2. I can factor out a 2. And then like I did at the beginning, um, when I rewrote that 5 to the negative x, I'm going to do that here. Okay, I can split this up and I can say, well, that's 4 squared to the x plus 1, and 4 squared is 16. Okay, so 4 to the 2x minus 1 times 4 cubed is equivalent to 16 to the x plus 1. Okay, I ended up with a completely different base than I started with. It is possible. Doesn't happen a whole lot, but it is possible. Let's look at one more example. We haven't done anything with dividing with exponents. So let's look at this problem right here. 4 to the negative x times 7 to the 3x minus 2 over 4 to the 2x minus 3 times 7 to the 3x times 7 to the negative 2. Now, there are actually a couple of different directions that I can go with this. Um, because it's exponents and multiplication, there are some different ways that I can go about the order. But what my eye is drawn to first is that I've got two sevens there in the denominator. So I want to combine those. And when I do combine those, I find out that it is the exact same expression as what I have in the numerator. Well, what does that mean I can do with that? I can cancel out. Because I'm just multiplying two things in the numerator or multiplying two things in the denominator, if something shows up in the numerator and in the denominator, I can cancel them out. Now, I'm going to ask you this. Where... Where do you think I should go from here? Because I've got, I've got two choices. I've got two choices of what I can do here. I have two different properties of exponents that I can use. What do y'all see when y'all look at that problem? What would y'all think to do? Hmm? Fix the numerator? Okay. What would you, what'd you say? Flip it? Okay. Well, we can't flip the whole thing. Yeah, okay. We can put the negative exponent, that negative x, we can move that to the denominator. There's something else that we can do. What, what's the property of exponents when you're dividing? What can you do? You can subtract the exponents, okay? I'm going to show you both ways. Now, since y'all said, well, let's move that negative exponent, let's do that, okay? The 4 to the negative x, I can move that to the denominator, so that becomes 4 to the positive x. And then I'm multiplying those, so I add their exponents, so that's 4 to the 3x minus 3. Now, let's look at what would have happened if I had subtracted. Okay, so subtraction, I keep the expression in the top, and I subtract the exponent from the denominator, and I get um, 4 to the negative 3x plus 3. x minus 2x is negative 3x. Subtracting a negative 3 is a positive 3. Don't forget those parentheses. We're still messing up on that. Um, we're forgetting if you subtract something that has multiple terms, that subtraction has got to be applied to everything. Now, are those the same expression? They are. They are. They don't look like it, but the only difference is a sign. We can fix that, okay? We can fix that. A um, couple of different ways that we can fix it. Um, let's see here. If I keep going with this green one, Okay, I can factor out a negative 3. 
x minus 3. <clears throat> x minus 1. Okay, if I factor out a negative 3 from my exponent, I've got negative 3 times x minus 1. And since that's a negative 3 exponent, I can move that to the denominator to make it positive. But the x minus 1 wasn't well, I can bring that with the 2. It can go either way. Hang on. Sorry. Don't mean to be confusing. <clears throat> Move it to the denominator and make it positive. Is that the same thing as the other expression now? Yeah, it is. Okay? Um, it is. And actually, we can write this as uh, 1 over 64 to the x minus 1. I can put the x minus 1 out there because there was just a 1 in the numerator. Okay? 1 to any power is still 1, so I can move that uh, right there and it is the same expression. Okay? It is the same. I didn't actually change anything. Um, so, it's another way to write it. That was just a little clutch. I think it's, yeah, a couple different ways of doing that. Okay, so let's look at some equations really quick. Okay, these are pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, if I give you the equation 9 is equal to 3 to the x plus 1, and I'm asking you to solve for x. Now, I think it's kind of obvious what x is. You have to think about it for a second, right? What is x? It's just one, okay? But we're going to look at some more complicated scenarios, so you need to know, well, how else can I get there if it's not this obvious, okay? So it would be great <clears throat> if the two sides of this equation were related somehow. Is 9 related to 3 in an exponential sense? Yeah, right? How can we rewrite 9 in terms of an exponent? 3 squared is 9, right? 3 squared is 9. So I just replace 9 with 3 squared because they're equivalent. Now, if I've got an equation and I've got the same base on both sides, the only way that equation is going to be true is if their exponents are equal to each other. So I can just set the 2 from the left side and the x plus 1 from the right side equal to each other and solve for x. And x is 1. Okay. Now, you saw that from the very beginning, but I'm going to give you some problems here in a minute. They're not quite that straightforward. Okay. So let's do the same thing here. What happens if we've got 1 half? Okay. 1 half to the x is equal to 8. Thinking exponentially, okay, um, is 8 related to 2? Yes, 2 cubed is 8. Now, how can I rewrite 1 half so that it's a power of 2? 2 to the negative 1. 2 to the negative 1 is equivalent to 1 half. So, I've got 2 to the negative x is equal to 2 cubed. So, negative x is equal to 3, which says x is negative 3. One half to the negative third is eight. <clears throat>